have power are not always the people you want to trust the most. It's kind of an odd sort of thing to say. We've been raised that we need to be obedient or compliant with authority. And for one reason, if you had parents that were trying to get you to comply with good things for you and for the family team, they may have used their power and authority over you as kind of a persuasion because it seemed like the easiest way to get you to comply so the situation could be as smooth as it could be or maybe even for your own health or benefit. That's provided if you had reasonably good parents who still use the authoritarian way of parenting. But as a consequence, you might be very vulnerable to individuals who have power. And what I mean by vulnerable to people who have power is that not everybody who's in a powerful position is benign, nor do they necessarily know how to use their power for the benefit of the people that they somehow are assisting. The people you want to trust who have power are those who try to benefit others. And I mean benefit others not in a way that's kind of narcissistically, they get all the gratification and all the glory and so forth and so on, but they really see that they're in a special position and as a consequence they take it as a responsibility to use their power in the most benevolent and beneficial way possible. They may enjoy their life and also benefit themselves from what's going on and hopefully that's what they do too. Why? Because you don't want them to use others to benefit themselves and you want them to be able to take good care of themselves. In other words, what you want to do when you're around people of power is you want to be discerning. And that's a little funny because people who are used to acquiescing to the powers to be, complying and being obedient, aren't really all that accustomed to be discerning about that person who has power. So here's a mindset that you really want to adopt. You want to discern. You want to discern with everyone. And you want to know that you have that power to be discerning. And of course, sometimes your vision or understanding or evaluation or your discernment may be a little bit cloudy. But you want to do your best. And you might take a collective, other people are discerning similar sorts of things. Now discerning means that you're actually evaluating that person to see whether or not they really possess the type of character, the type of qualities that you want to see in a person who's in a position of power. And if they're in that position of power and they have good qualities, they have good character, and they're trying to do their best, of course flawed, but they're trying to do your best, their best, and they're trying to do the best for the people that they're serving, and they're also living comfortably and healthy themselves, then chances are to be able to work with that person in power, let them influence you, let them be a guide or uh, a person whom you do comply with and be cooperative with, that's a little bit safer. But notice at all moments you're discerning. You don't just say yes to an individual because of who they are and their position. You say yes because what it is they're wanting you to do makes sense. In fact, as soon as you feel like you have lost your ability to say no, or no thank you, or I'm not sure that's the best, as soon as you've lost your right to be you and your discerning self, something's wrong with the system. Something's wrong with the dynamic between you and the authority. They may be using fear, fear that you'll lose your job, fear that you'll use, lose their love, fear that you'll lose their support or their respect. So if they're using fear, chances are they're not really people of power, but they are trying to be powerful by making you afraid, subordinate, having to comply because you're afraid if you don't. Now, I'm not suggesting that you just suddenly become difficult with people like this, because remember, you also have to be discerning about your own character qualities. You want to be strategically clear yourself about what's the healthiest way for you to move yourself in a situation, through a situation, and out of a bad situation. Now, not all people with power are good all the way across the board. So let's just say 80% is a B, not bad, not great. A is wonderful, that's the grade you would give them. C, D, F, I don't know if you really want to be around an individual where you take commands from someone that's functioning at that level. So you want to be discerning of the people that you allow to be the authorities in your life once you have a choice. And if you don't feel like you have a choice, then you need to figure out how in the world did I maneuver myself through this situation and beyond it to where I get to move back into a position of my own influence, my own power, and my own choice as to what authority I am going to work with cooperatively. If people had done this with Hitler long before he began to take this insidious infrastructure type control of what went on, there may have been a very different move that went on and pivotal people in Hitler's life could have taken a very different shift 
but he wielded a very persuasive and influential, influential process, hypnotic if you will. The fact that he even delved into the deep arts of power and cultic practices suggests that he was trying every insidious strategic approach to be able to overpower people, intimidate people, frighten people, make them subordinate to him. Uh, this is, of course, an extreme example, but nonetheless, you need something you need to be aware of. Now, parents, children, listen up. Parents, if you're raising your children to always be compliant to authority, you're not helping them be discerning. Instead, you want to help your children be discerning about the authorities in their life. To learn how to work within a situation, to learn how to work out of a situation where the authority is potentially damaging to them. Second, if you're wanting your children to be compliant with you without any questions asked, you're not raising a thinking child. You're raising a child that's going to be more likely abused than one that's a thinking child. And yes, it's much more challenging to work with children who are thinking that perhaps you're not doing a good parenting moment. But they're thinking, they're discerning, and you want them to do that. Because that's the way this world is going to evolve. Not by us bowing down to power, but by us being discerning with each other so that those that are in position of power are called to be answerable as well. Well, we had democracy once upon a time in the United States. It was all about checks and balances. We wanted our journalists to put a checks and balance on our politicians. We wanted our Supreme Court justice system to put a check and balance on the President and the Congress, and the Congress put a check and balance on the President and Supreme Court justice. Those balances have been severely disrupted lately because we don't want those whistleblowers to say anything bad. Wait a minute, did I say we? Hmm. Actually, it's the people in power that are trying to use power to dominate or blind those that they dominate. That's when we need to be most alert, most discerning, wake our children up, wake ourselves up and say, wait a minute, we need to be clear. And if our leaders don't let us be clear, then we really do have a difficulty. Don't let your kids walk into abusive situations by feeling like they have to be compliant with authority. Help them learn how to be discerning and clear, self-respectful, and how to move out from under authorities that can be frightening, oppressive, manipulative, or wish to blind those who they would dominate. This is very serious business. I hope you take it seriously and take very good care of yourself. Let's all wake up. Let's all call each other to be as answerable as possible. Dr. Carol Francis, clinical psychologist, clinical hypnotherapist, marriage family child therapist, a whole lot of other things as well. And the reason I emphasize the clinical hypnotherapist is because we can be hypnotized to be blind. And I'm asking all of us to be very wide awake. Feeling good.